By the end of this video, you will learn what wrappers are and how to use them in Apex. Hi, I'm Simon, and I'm a developer from SmoothStack. In programming, a wrapper class is any class which wraps or encapsulates the functionality of another class or component. A wrapper class in Apex is a powerful tool for handling complex data structures and combining data from various sources. This tutorial will guide you through creating and using a simple wrapper class. Think of a wrapper class as a gift box that you use to package multiple items together for a special occasion. Just as a gift box holds various presents and keeps them organized, a wrapper class holds and organizes different types of data or objects in Apex. To follow along, you will need a Salesforce developer account, a basic understanding of Apex programming, access to the Salesforce developer console or any other Apex development environment, and an eager learning mindset. Let's go ahead and roll up our sleeves and get into the demo. All right, so for starters, this is a wrapper class. We have created a class called Contact Case Wrapper. Uh, we have made it global because we're planning to use it for our REST API callout. And we have included two different variables, one for case and one for contact. So this may look pretty simple at a glance, and realistically it is, but despite its simplicity, it's very powerful because now when we take input from a REST endpoint, we can take in a contact case wrapper, which will provide us information for both a case and a contact. So in my first REST endpoint, we have modified our post method to create a contact and a case. So instead of taking in just a case as our input, we're taking in our contact case wrapper, which we're calling submitted wrapper. And in order to get the contact from it, all we have to say is that the submitted contact is equal to submitted wrapper dot submitted contact. And then we can insert the contact as normal and do the same thing with the case. We just have to say that a submitted case is equal to the case that they sent in the wrapper. And then we create our list of save results and then we insert it using our case data accessor. Uh, notably, we haven't seen the creation of the case data accessor, but it's identical to the contact data accessor. And up here, we have initialized a case data accessor. So it'll contain the same insert method, but instead of inserting contacts, it'll insert cases. So this is really as simple as it gets when it comes to using wrappers, but again, it's very powerful because we're now taking in both a contact and a case. So if the people on the other side of the integration have a use case that requires both, you don't need separate callouts for creating the contact and the case. You can perform both within the same callout. And so here, let's go ahead and test this integration. I have already called this just a moment ago and it succeeded. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and refresh. But as you can see, we are calling the post method of my contact endpoint. And let's go ahead and ignore all of these errors. Uh, well, it looks like it's not being that friendly, but I promise those are not misspelled. Let's get a closer look at what we have in the JSON. So first we have our submitted wrapper, and then within the submitted wrapper, we input the submitted contact, 
which will contain the first name, last name, email, external ID of the contact that we are inserting. And then we have the submitted case, which contains the origin, the status, because those are both required fields, uh, the subject, and the description. It's worth noting that you won't need to take in origin and status from the API call in every use case. There are times when you want to just take in, say, the subject description and perhaps other fields, and then within the apex, you can set the origin and the status if you are going to have the same origin and the same status from every single call out from that endpoint. But for the sake of this demo, we're just passing in web and new status as the case values. Uh, it's very important that all of these variables match the case and spelling of the actual variables within the wrapper and within the object because otherwise you'll get an error. But in the hopes that we have spelled everything correctly, let's go ahead and change the external ID to a different random set of numbers and we'll go ahead and change the name of the contact to test wrapper 2 and the subject of the case to test wrapper 2 so that we can distinguish it from my initial smoke test and then we will execute. All right and we got an okay response so let's go ahead and enter Salesforce to see the new case and contact for ourselves. And yep, here we see test wrapper two, our newly created contact, and we can verify its fields. Um, so yes, the email is test at test dot com. The owner is the API user, which we logged in as to create it. And the external ID, 245-23574, 245-23574. So everything seems in order there. And then we can go ahead and verify the case. All right, and yep, down here we have this new case, wrapper test two, and we have the status as new, the origin as web, and then the subject and description match what we input. So you can see here that using a wrapper class and creating it is pretty simple if you know how to do it, and it can really improve the robustness of your Apex and enable you to perform more powerful API requests in additional, sorry, in addition to anything else that you might need a wrapper class for. So that is all for today. Thank you very much for joining in on the demo. Congratulations, you've learned how to create and use a wrapper class in Apex. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss other useful videos by myself and my colleagues. See you next time.